What's the difference between a hijacker and just an unauthorized seller showing up on your listing? My name is Stephen Pope and I'm the founder of my Amazon guy and I'll answer that in this video. So simply put, somebody who just shows up on your Amazon listing is doing so because they have sourced your item through your distribution network, perhaps against your will. But what happens is, is it takes the buy box from you and affects your sales. So on a detail page listing, you can see how it says ships from sold by. So the ships from is just the fulfillment method. So this could be your seller name. This could be Amazon. And then the sold by is the actual seller. So in listings with multiple sellers, you'll see whoever's in the buy box will show up here. And then a secondary seller will show up uh, if you click on the see more sellers icon. That does not show up if you're the only seller of an item, like on this listing here. A hijacker, however, will, will take your listing, usually when you're not actively selling it, and generally speaking, not on a brand registered listing, and they'll change the data. They'll, they'll, they'll start changing your images, they'll take all of your, your product reviews, change the brand name, and just co-opt the entire listing and, and uh, say sayonara to it. This is a net benefit and reason why all of your listings need to have a trademarked brand name. If you don't have a trademarked brand name, we do sell those at my Amazon guy. Just go to myamazonguy.com. Uh, so, so hijackers are going to be very damaging because they're going to they're gonna change all your attributes. But for the most part, those are pretty rare. Uh, more common is when somebody just simply shows up on your listing. Now, this could happen because they're an unauthorized seller because they purchased one of your items for 50% off at some point. Maybe you did a rebate program, which I don't recommend those, by the way. Uh, but if you did a rebate program, they show up on here and they're just trying to make money on it, right? So people who are buying rebate programs these days are typically bottom dwellers who just want to get a good buck or make money on you, and then they'll show up on the listing and resell the item. Way better to build a community around your item and instead of trying to feed the bottom dwellers, you should be feeding the top dwellers, the people who actually will build your brand up a la community building. But that happens. Another thing that could happen is let's say you're a big corporation and you're watching this video and you're like, yeah, I sell to 100 different distributors. Well, one of those distributors is going to show up, be a mom and pop, if you will, and, and they're going to they're gonna sell behind the scenes directly on the Amazon platform, whether you want them to or not, and it's hard to source those. So those particular sellers are just unauthorized sellers. They, they're not selling uh, an item that is a knockoff, which can happen. That's more of a hijacker, right? So like a hijacker is somebody who either changes your product data or is selling an item that is not your actual item, but it's selling on your listing. So maybe they went on Alibaba and found your item, but it's not with your branded packaging. So all of those scenarios where somebody's selling uh, a knockoff can be dealt with with brand registry inf infringement reporting. So I'm gonna walk you guys through what that looks like. So if you go over to brandregistry.amazon.com, and you look at your brands that are registered, there's a section for report a violation, right? So let's go ahead and click into that. And in here, you can look up a listing that has the problem. So uh, in this particular listing here, I'm just gonna grab that ASIN, gonna go search it, right? And so in here, you can see all, uh, all the various ways you could report the data or the seller, right? So if I wanted to report the listing, right, you could come in here and select an ASIN. Although in this particular case, I cannot select this ASIN because it includes me in the offer and I'm the only seller. So I can't actually report myself, which is, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, <clears throat> so if you were going to go take a listing that has multiple sellers, you could then choose on the drop down what to report, who to report. Here's a better example with the Nintendo Switch uh, item. In here, you can see 91 offers, right? So 91 different sellers of the same item. So some of these are going to be unauthorized retailers. 
And if I wanted to report them because, hey, let's say this random dude, Ultra Design, I know for a fact that they are selling a knockoff Nintendo Switch and I'm, and I'm Nintendo, then I, of course, would want to report them. So I'd come in here, I'd select that seller name, I would then go to the next phase to report them. And then notice here I could select multiple sellers or certain sellers and you go to the next page and simply report them. So that would be one way you could do that if you wanted to report the sellers. Another issue could be like a copyright problem, right? Let's let's say uh, somebody has uh, infringed upon your image. They ripped off your photo and then they went over to their own listing and, and loaded it to themselves. Well, you could come in here and do a copyright infringement as well. You could select an image from the drop down and report that. In the top right, you can see copyright infringement or trademark infringement, right? So there's a variety of different things you can do. So let's let's do let's select one random seller here and let's select the uh, the trademark infringement. And then you could say a product is unlawfully using my trademark. It could be in the title, the images, the product description. Product or packaging has my trademark on it, or a product is counterfeit. So if you're going to select uh, the product being counterfeit because somebody was selling on your own listing, you would select the offer on the listing, a la the seller, and not the ASIM, and then you would say it's counterfeit and, and say, hey, these guys are selling a knockoff item of my item. You could then select the trademark from the drop down as well as your brand name and hit submit. These are taken very seriously, and depending on your track record with Amazon, if you haven't submitted bogus claims in the past uh, and you have a good track record above 95%, they might automatically just take the seller down like, like that. And so it can be very beneficial uh, to take action when these situations arise. So this is the best method to get rid of both hijackers and unauthorized sellers. Now, let's go back to that original scenario, though. If you are selling the same item and they're just one of the distributors, then Amazon will not accept that as a violation. Amazon will deem that as more of a distribution problem. So if you're in that situation, what you want to do instead is contact your distributor um, and tell them, hey, knock this off. I, I'm going to cut you off unless you stop selling on Amazon. Um, it doesn't really help brands to have more than, um, especially if you sell directly yourself on Amazon, it doesn't help you to have multiple sellers. Like there's no benefit to having multiple sellers. Uh, but if you were a wholesaler or, or a manufacturer and you chose two or three or four partners or whatever it might be, maybe you want them to rotate it because then they're carrying all the stock and they take the liability and then you've got multiple partners and avoid stock out situations like that could happen too. There could be some benefit of that. But the larger you get, the more complicated your distribution network is, the more likely you're going to see unauthorized resellers show up. So it behooves you to get them to sign an agreement with you before you even allow them to become a distributor and a retailer of your brand. And so what you're going to do is you're going to make them sign like a one-page agreement that basically says, hey, you can sell this under these circumstances, right? You can sell it on your website. You can sell it in your physical store, but you cannot sell it on Amazon. And you put that agreement together so you prohibit them from selling on Amazon. So that's that's the, kind of the difference between an unauthorized reseller versus a hijacker who's coming in and changing your data. Uh, and both can be dealt with through the brand registry portal. Now, if you have a hijack listing where they change the brand name, your course of action in those situations will be to try and change the data back, get a trademark, and lock that listing down. So hopefully that was helpful. My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. We have a bunch of contents and uh, information about all of these kinds of catalog scenarios. Check out these other videos uh, that might be able to help you on your journey when selling on Amazon.